Taurus, hello. For those of you who have been here before, welcome back. And to those of you who it is your first time here, welcome to you. I'm Denise. This is Surrender to the Flow Tarot. And I'm going to be doing a timeless. That means whatever time you come across this reading, that's the time for you. Um, general reading for the collective of Taurus, Taurus Sun, Moon, Rising, Ascendant, or Venus. Uh, it's general, so it's not going to resonate with everybody. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't, and be careful not to put yourself in a story that feels like yours or it sounds like yours. You don't want to relate. You want to go further than that. You want to relate and resonate. You need both. You feel me? You should feel it in your bones. You should know without a doubt that I am talking to you. Okay. Um, I say this because it's really easy to get caught up in tarot readings, especially if there are some things that the reader is picking up on that are similar, that are relevant in your life. But um, especially if it involves another party and you don't know what they're thinking and the tarot reader is telling you what you wish they were thinking or give you enough that it's like the edges of your person, but not, you know what I'm saying? Not like who they actually were in reality. So um, that's why I'm very adamant, vigilant about getting that across because it can really fuck people up. Okay. So today's reading, um, we're doing, sorry, I just had a different thought. I missed last week's readings because I have vocal cord problems. I have damaged my vocal cords. It's not severe, uh, but I start speech therapy in a week. So I had to take off and I might need to do that still. I'm having to like work regular vocal rest into my life, in my schedule. And it's time consuming. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> Taurus, you didn't want to know all this stuff about me. You're the first reading of the day. So this is always how it is at the first reading of the day. All right. Sorry, that's just the background. I might be missing for a few weeks, but it, I will be back as soon as I'm able and allowed if I am missing. Okay. Today's reading, we are asking what divine feminine deity is by your side right now and available and around for you to call on for support. And we're using the Divine Feminine Oracle, which is super dope. And then we're going to pull a Heart Thoughts card for you at the end with an affirmation for you that you can learn, use to integrate whatever lessons or messages you're taking from this reading, okay? All right, Taurus. I hope you guys are doing better. You're doing as good as you're able, okay? Be kind to yourselves. And be good to yourselves. Even if you make mistakes, we all do, right? All right, Taurus, what divine feminine is around for you right now. Ooh, I'm excited a little bit. So I'll be reading from the book. Part of why I paused earlier before I was going to say what decks we were using is because I tried to do um, a condensed reading like for everyone this this week to do less talking and then didn't realize till after I was in the first reading that I chose a deck that has four pages of info for each card and I was like oh, oh well all right so I will be reading you might want to take notes um, for anything that pops out or names or places I would this is what I do when when this stuff happens for me I jot everything down and I look everything up because at least seven out of 10 of those things will really resonate. Um, you feel me? And you discover more things. So it's worth doing. You don't have to, but it's just FYI. Okay, you got Queen Esther, the morning star. My, she looks like Lana Del Rey. 
My ego is in service of my soul. And I trust my soul's divine timing. Oh, this is interesting. The glare. See? Just white, it whites it out. Okay. There's a piece to this, right? There's kind of a like an anxiety, but it's like the echoes of anxiety. You know what I'm saying? Like the reverberations of mostly past anxiety. Like it doesn't necessarily need to be there anymore. And I feel like it's a crown chakra opening. Everything, cause she's looking up too, right? Everything is doing, is looking that way. The direction is there. But it's not necessarily in like peace, like total alignment, but it's in recognition. So maybe that's like where you are right now. Let's see, maybe I'm totally off. Who knows? We're about to find out. It's funny, I just got a kitten last night, um, unexpectedly, <laughs> and she's six weeks old and she's awesome. And one of the names I was thinking was Esther. I went with Raven. Okay. Queen Esther, the morning star. Esther represents the powerful combination of feminine intuition and divine timing. I think it's interesting that they pointed out feminine. Because they're making a distinction between intuition. You know what I mean? So however that resonates for you, I would love to know in the comments if you would like to share. Don't worry, no you don't need to keep it in mind though if that resonated why as you listen to this you know what i'm saying okay esther was a hebrew orphan born with the name hadassah i would look that up h-a-d-a-s-s-a-h raised by her cousin mordecai also i would look that up great name it's a great name it's also a kind of scary name she lived with the jewish my brain I just thought of Criminal Minds episode. She lived with the Jewish community in exile in Persia during the 5th century BCE. Mordecai became aware of a plot against the Jewish people created by the king's chief minister, Haman. Using her brilliance and her intuition, Esther came up with a plan to save her cousin and her people. Her beauty had caught the attention of the king. So when his current wife, Basati, refused to come to him when called, Esther seized the moment and the king chose her to be his wife. That's taking one for the team, <laughs> literally. <sighs> Ruthless. It's interesting. Then Esther didn't wait for the king to call her. Ah. Look at that. It just shows you that I don't read ahead. I'm very in the moment. So if anybody ever thinks like I'm making shit up or something, I'm totally not. You could tell because it was the very next sentence. Once he, okay, hold on. Esther didn't wait for the king to call her. She prepared a large banquet and then called for him. There you go. That's the boss. That's the boss. Once he was fully in love with her, she revealed that she was a Jew and that Haman had plotted to kill her people. The book of Esther in the Tan Tanakh, T-A-N as in Nancy, A-K-H, or the Hebrew scriptures is known as the scroll or the Meg Megillah, M-E-G-I-L-L-A-H. And it is read twice out loud, once in the morning and in the evening during the festival of Purim to celebrate the memory of Esther's brave actions. 
Her name is derived from the word meaning bright star or morning and evening star. This is the name she grew into when she courageously trusted her intuition and used its divine timing to save herself and her people. This is so interesting. I, I'm so interested in knowing how it's resonating with y'all. When your soul selects her card, the ego has a timetable that the soul couldn't care less about. When we are feeling stressed or threatened in some way, Fear can be exceptionally loud and can inform the ego to work overtime in trying to get something accomplished or to manipulate something to happen. The natural flow of energy that's always at work behind the scenes, the universe's capacity to assist us, then gets blocked. Right. When we are in service of love, we are following the dictates of our soul. And when the ego is in service of the soul, divine timing ensues. When the ego is in service of the soul. Interesting. Don't obliterate it, right? Have it become in service to your soul. Not like try to eradicate it. Interesting. Takes pressure off my brain. Esther mastered this art. Even under extreme duress, she listened wisely to her soul. It doesn't say anything about like her daily practices because in order to do that, you have to keep yourself, if you're in the 3D, which she was, you have to keep yourself in alignment with your 3D body, taking full care of it, sleep, food, you know, all your basic needs and your spiritual body and your mental body. Do you know what I mean? And so that's like meditation or gardening or whatever it is. So that that's important to know too, because if you are full up of stuff and just not sleeping right, and you're not functioning right, you're not, and you don't have space because your brain is taken up with space with everything because you're overthinking or whatever, stressed out, there's no space for the new to come in, for the truth, for anything else to come in. And so those things that could be coming in are the truth. And they will be in some way if you're that out of alignment. You know what I mean? This is her imperative. Imperative. Trust that everything is aligning in divine timing. Trust your soul voice. Right now, when things are, feel totally out of con your control or anytime it feels out of your control and all you want to do is control it. That's a gigantic hello. Go take a break. Go do you, okay? Go pamper you. Go do something for you because you being a B E itch right now or a bastard, you know, or a dickhead. You feel me? Because you out of alignment and you're projecting. Go take care of you and then everything will fall into place. You feel me? Then you'll be able to let divine timing work. Soul voice meditation. What do I intuitively know will happen in divine timing for me? Here's my answer to that. Whatever is supposed to happen. Because if you try to focus on specific outcomes, you are self-sabotaging yourself and that's expectations and attachments. So it's like you get the essence, you get all the important things. You do a lot of work on that. You do lists in your head or write them out and refine them and refine them. You know what I mean? You do what you need to. Okay, intention. My ego is in service of my soul. And I trust my soul's divine timing. Yeah. Let it go, let God. That's a real, that's, that's real, right? Let go, let God, whatever God is, source energy, whatever that is. Okay. I don't know anything about Lana Del Rey, but um, if she has a song that has Queen, Esther, or Morning Star, or star in it, I feel like you're supposed to listen to it. I 
feel silly saying this stuff sometimes. It really takes me a hot second because I'm like, really? I feel, <laughs> you know, like, really? <laughs> Ready? Ooh. I'm not going to take this, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. I am on the next step to my healing. I listen to my body's messages and see myself as whole and healed. I am taking responsibility. I am aware there is something I can do to change. I, since I've got these, pull one card for myself every single morning. Um, I And then I look at the bottom too, but uh, I journal, I write everything down and then I journal about whatever comes up for each card and then I meditate and so I can integrate whatever lessons or affirmation or whatever, you know what I mean, into my existence. So it's not just tools floating around or seeds out there, but they were never planted. Again, so close. Okay. I am willing to see only my magnificence. Magnificence? Magnificence. Magnificence. I think and say only what I want to create in my life. I'm more than adequate for all I need to do. Okay, you got to be careful with wanting, I want peace, I want love, I want rest. It's keeping you in the wanting and not in the, in the doing. Do you understand? Okay. I think and say only what I want to create in my life. I am more than adequate for all I need to do. I can't wait to see what actually comes out for you. I am always safe. I release my emotional attachment to beliefs from the past so they... Mm -hmm. I release my emotional attachment to beliefs from the past so that they do not hurt me in the present. I am safe. That is a really good one. I release my emotional attachment to beliefs from the past so that they do not hurt me in the present. I am safe. I release my emotional attachment to false beliefs from the past that no longer serve me so that they do not hurt me in the present. I am safe. Okay, it's ours. Yes, I will make my own cards one day. Um, one day. I hope that this helped. And I hope that you know you are loved always. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing your energy again with me. And I will hopefully see you and you will hopefully hear me next week. Bye, Taurus.